Good morning. Good morning and thank you for coming to the 13th annual Mayor's Prayer Breakfast in Canby, Oregon. We'd like to just uh, tell you the important things first. The bathrooms are out that door and uh, uh, you are at Cutsforth Thriftway. We want to thank John from Cutsforth and we ask that you support Cutsforth. And uh, join uh, things downstairs uh, that you need for your family. I'd like to ask you to stand please and uh, Darlene Kennedy will uh, say the Pledge of Allegiance and the uh, Sing God Bless and Merry Christmas. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Like to have the senior pastor of Canby First Baptist, Pastor Lee Wiegand. Close. Close. <laughs> We're glad that you're here this morning. On the tables in front of you, you will find a couple of things. One, a program that has the words to that song that we just sang, in case you didn't know it. <laughs> and uh, also, uh, there's a white card there. And one of the things we do at First B on Tuesday nights is we gather and we pray. We pray for our elected officials, we pray for uh, needs in our community and our people. If you have prayer requests, please take out that card, put your name and address. We would commit to be praying for that need for the next three months if you'd like us to be praying for you. Let's pray together and then we'll get instructions on how to eat some food. Amen? Amen. Father, we love, love you a whole bunch. We thank you for the privilege of being able to gather this morning on a day that our nation has called us to pray. So, Father, we thank you for our elected officials. We thank you for their service. We thank you that they are ministers of God for good. And, Father, we want to honor them this day. Thank you for the food that you provided. We pray in your son's most precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lee. Just a little bit of logistics. We've changed it a little bit. We are learning every year. This year we have coffee in two spots over here. And we have coffee over here. We also would like you to form two lines as you come down the food table so everybody can get and have time to eat. Today the wonderful background music will be provided by Darlene and uh, we invite you to chow down and we'll see you at about 6.55, okay? Thank you. And the mayor's 13th annual prayer breakfast. I hope you're all awake this morning. As you can see, my mare, my comb, and the shower didn't agree with me, and the cowlick won. So I uh, hope you are having a great morning, and uh, thank you for coming out this morning. We uh, are celebrating the National Day of Prayer, designated by the U.S. Congress when people are asked to turn to God in prayer and meditation. It was formalized in 1952, although earlier 
days of prayer and fasting by the Second Continental Congress started in 1775. So you're upholding today the National Day of Prayer, a wonderful tradition made into a uh, uh, law and observance by our country. So I thank you for being here. I'd like to also thank you for being a city resident and enjoying the 13th year of this. And thank you for your coming and, and taking responsibility to bring unity as we all are bo the body of Christ and we are not all separate, we are all one body. I'd like to introduce to you Senator Alan Olson and uh, ask as, you, as he comes up that you enjoy and listen to what he has to say and then we will pray after for his request. Senator Olson. Thank you very much. What a pleasure to be here this morning and thank you all for coming. Um, it was quite interesting. I've pondered this, uh, this event this morning quite a bit and I would like to relate back to my life experiences when I first decided to become quote unquote a politician because I hate politics. <laughs> I absolutely loathe and despise politics. People are wonderful, policy is wonderful, and politics is terrible. We, we've seen it and we've seen the degradation of politics through our nation and it's appalling because we as, as God-fearing people need to work together to make America a better place to make our state a better place, and our city doesn't need to be made better because it's the greatest place in Oregon. <laughs> so. It's, it's um, interesting. First off, I'd like to ask God to make sure that I stay on time, because as a politician, I always talk more than five to seven minutes. Uh, but secondly, uh, I've had some extraordinary opportunities in my life and being a senator is one of them and I thank all of you that that allowed me to do this because it is you're very popular and they want to hear you a little better oh I'm sorry it is the most amazing job in the world and um, it, it, people don't know I'm a general contractor by trade and uh, it's wonderful to to build a home and see the smiles on people's faces and say this is my new house uh, and that, that's what I want to be my legacy. Uh, down in Salem, my legacy, I just want people to say I was a good senator, that I represented the folks, and that's what, exactly what I do. But in my, in my life in politics, I've had some downfalls. I don't know if you all know that in June of 2015, I had a heart attack. And I actually uh, was able to get to the hospital in time, and my heart stopped, and they restarted it. And that was rather interesting because when the doctor was rubbing on my chest, I thought I was taking a nap, but I wasn't. And then I kind of, um, I did see that white light that everyone talks about. And it gave me a new perspective as to what I need to do in Salem. Last year, for some reason, I don't know what, the reason was, but I was going to work. I was actually going to Salem to work on a committee that I was on, and suddenly I decided it wasn't time to go to work. It was time to go home. I turned around, went home, and I called my doctor, and I said, you know, I just feel strange. And he said, uh, you need to go to the emergency room. So I did, and everything was fine. They decided that I better see my cardiologist. So I did, and everything wasn't fine. The very next day I had a bypass, five of them as a matter of fact. Interesting, interesting. People say that there is no God, really. I can say there is. Amen. It's given me a new perspective in Salem. And that new perspective is, and I've always had inklings of this, but it's really stronger now. I don't care about politics. I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican. What I care about is Oregonians. My job down there is to make a better life for Oregonians. And when we have our invocations in the morning, um, oftentimes, not, I shouldn't say oftentimes, sometimes I'm allowed to give the invocation. And it's really cool. And because of the experiences I've had in life, 
I relate it to Psalm 23. The valley of death. And I told my colleagues, I'd been there. I'd looked in. There are no Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> so, um, and I also have a very nice tie that I wear. I wore it yesterday, so I didn't wear it today. And it says, in God we trust. Our nation was created in God's image. He wanted America to be America. He gave us all the bounty we could ever want. We should use it. Unfortunately, we get into politics and we forget our vision. We forget our focus. We forget that we're all Oregonians. And we in Salem should do what's best for Oregonians. Not, not what's best for the party, not what's best for the group we belong to, but what's best for Oregonians. And one of the things I thought about this morning, as a matter of fact, was if I was asked them to pray for something, I would, I would relate to the Wizard of Oz. Remember the scarecrow? He needed a brain. That's what we need down there. We need brains. We need, we need leadership to, to come forward. We need to look at the course that our state is on. And you know, everybody says, oh, we're doing great. The unemployment rate is really low. Everything is wonderful. Really? Watch the news every day. Watch the homeless. Watch the suicide rate. Watch the people that are in despair. I'm on Human Services Committee. There's not a day that I don't sit in that committee that people come in in terrible despair. That's our state. It's beautiful, the most beautiful state in the nation. But the fact is that we're not doing as well as we could be doing. Our schools are in total disrepair. 49th, 50th, pick a number. Our graduation rate should be near the top. The amount of money we spend in this state is absolutely ridiculous. Over $9,000 for every man, woman, and child in this state is what our budget is. We're a small state. We pass bills, we pass laws that impede the progress of business. We put mandates on business that no logical business could ever ma maintain if they wanted to do it themselves. But we put a mandate, you must do this, you must do this, you must do that. And that's not the way our society should work. We should look at each other and say, what would I do for you, Jack? What can I do to help you today? How can I help Tyler make his business more uh, uh, profitable? And you know, we talk about profit and we talk about corporations needing to pay their fair share. When people come to me and ask me that question and they say, Senator, you need to make them pay their fair share. And I said, okay, what's fair? There's only one being that knows what's fair. But if I was to put a number on it, I'd say, okay, corporations should pay 15 cents, 15%, uh, but so should you, because that's fair. If you want fair, if you want even, that's what we should do. But we don't look at it that way. We look at it that someone else should pay for what I need. And the word that I think that this state has lost the most, and this is what I would ask you all to pray for, is responsibility. We need to be responsible stewards of our land. We need to be responsible for our families. We need to be responsible for our state. And we want to pass the responsibility off to others. It's your job to make certain that I have a good life, a good income, and it's not. And people tell me, as a matter of fact, I had a colleague say one day when she was running for office, if God wanted me to win, I would. And I said, no, God's not going to come down here and campaign for you. He gave you the tools. That was his job, to provide you with the tools, the means to do what you need to do. And that's what I ask everybody to do. 
He's given us the tools. He's given us the means. It's our responsibility to make certain that we use them to the best of our ability for everyone in Oregon. And that's what I'd ask you to pray for. And the other thing is, I'd ask you to pray for good health, because I only have one heart. It's working good, but <laughs> thank you very much. We have a wonderful pastor who's been serving Canby for 50 years. Would the senior pastor of Barlow Community Church come up, Pastor Michael Burnett, and pray for Senator Alan Olson? Thank you. And our state. Thank you, Michael. Let us pray. Our Father, it's a humbling experience to come before you in prayer. Almighty God, creator of all things, humbly we beseech you to give Alan Olson the following. As a burden, as the prophets of old, he has accepted the burden of responsibility for decision making. We pray that he has the peace of God as he makes these decisions. We're thankful for his conscious awareness and his spiritual alertness to the all-present mighty God, whom all things exist and have their being. From this, we pray that wisdom will come forth. Wisdom based on knowledge, but knowledge without wisdom, Father, <clears throat> without your spirit, seems little hope for solution. You are the author of wisdom, and the scriptures clearly tell us that when we need wisdom, we should call upon you in prayer, in humility, because the responsibility and the challenges are great. It looks like there are difficult days ahead. There certainly are difficult decisions. We pray that Alan will have the strength and the health and the wisdom to bear the burden, to serve the people, to honor God. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you Pastor. Pastor. Thank, you. Thank you, Senator. Thank What a privilege it is to have the mayor of Canby come up now and share with us some wonderful things. Mayor Brian Hodson, would you come up and share your heart with us? Thank you. I was coming up front, I should probably put my coat on since Alan wore a suit and tie today. So, I don't know, there was somebody in here in shorts, and I was like, oh, I should have totally, could have gotten away with it, I think. <laughs> Aren't we supposed to be over 80 today? That's okay. I generally run warm, and uh, wearing a suit and being anxious doesn't help. <clears throat> uh, you know, it was interesting. Alan talked about, um, you know, the Wizard of Oz, and he talked about the Scarecrow needing a brain, and Really, you look at all three of those characters in terms of, you know, the lion needing courage and the tin man needing a heart. Uh, I think that those are also qualities that I think are needed, uh, not just in Salem, but I think nationally, I think locally, I think in a lot of things that <clears throat> we deal with and whatnot. I think that that carries through all of us with our, our businesses too. So, Alan, thank you for uh, your words. I appreciate it. And, um, and I, I, I do pray that you're, you stay in good health. We need you down there, so thank you, sir. Uh, I just want to thank all of you for coming this morning. Um, this is another great turnout, and um, I, it's always awe-inspiring to be here and, and, um, and stand up here and talk to you and, and have so many people here to be praying for our city and our country uh, on this day. Uh, thank you to uh, Pete and the rest of the pastors that put this together and, and keep this going. I, I, um, it's a piece that we need, and I appreciate it tremendously. And 
I think we need to give John and Cuts first a round of applause for setting up early and feeding us donuts. So, uh, like I said, I find it very humbling and, and an honor to be to be prayed for, not just today, but so many other days. Um, uh, many of you know uh, Pastor Lee, uh, but he comes to the city council every January. He brings orange cards. And so when I first was on the council, I thought the orange cards were because he was a Beavers fan. Um, but it just turns out he just likes the color orange. But he collects those cards from us. And then every Tuesday, um, his congregation goes through those cards and, and we've filled them out with our prayer requests and just things that are heavy on us and things that we just want prayers for. And they pray for us. So every month or so, we'll get a postcard in our city mail that says, hey, we just prayed for you this day and, and we just want you to know that we're thinking of you and praying for you and, and we hope the best for you. Um, and then at the end of the year, we get our prayer cards back and there's on the back side is the date of every week that we are prayed for. Um, it's pretty powerful. Thank you, Lee. Um, I was talking to Wanda when I walked in today when I was first elected, Wanda had sent me a letter and, um, about being elected and praying for me. And I get stopped in the grocery store and people say, hey, I just want you to know that we've been praying for you. Well, and I, it's wonderful. I hope it's all good prayers, um, <laughs> nothing too bad. Um, you know, prayer is powerful. Um, being prayed for is powerful. Praying for others is powerful. Um, it surprises me when, you know, there's question or pushback about prayer and whether or not it should be happening or it should be done or should it not be done. It's a powerful piece that we have. Um, my counselor Smith is here and I know when he was on the planning commission, they started opening the planning commissions with an invocation. And then we started doing that as a city council. Um, I think it's important. Um, I think it's I don't think there's a problem with being prayed, prayed for and being able to be up at the dais and pray for our city, you know, twice a month, I, I think is a pretty important piece to what I get to do as mayor. In, in a time when it's so easy to tear down, not just our leaders, but each other with the stroke of a keystroke, an enter button on our keyboard, a tweet, a post, um, an insta chat or a snapogram, um, um, the things that we say through those media pieces that we wouldn't say to the person if they were sitting in front of us is, is a tough thing to hear. Our president gets that. He tweets a lot, and it, it definitely has created some backlash for him, but he is, um, he's definitely getting a full frontal assault in a lot of ways, um, I think, and that's unfortunate. So we do need to pray. We need to pray for a change of mind and a change of heart uh, on those things. Please keep praying. Please keep encouraging, uh, encouraging me, us as a group here in this room, in your churches, in our community. Um, not just National Day of Prayer, but every day. Um, this is my fifth prayer breakfast as mayor. And, um, and every time it comes about, I get excited, and at the same time, I get anxious. Because I, I want your time to be valuable, and I want to be of value to you. Um, and each year I want to try to give you a little bit more insight into me and my, my walk and my faith and how that has come about. And, um, and uh, um, or even sometimes the lack thereof of my faith, because it does happen. You question it or you hit tough times and um, you think that, okay, I'm going to take over driving now. I got it. Yeah, I know. That doesn't generally work out very well. Um, I find that I am in, I, that I am and can be the most present with, with God when I'm out in nature. So whether that's the woods, the ocean, um, or the mountains, that's generally where I, I feel um, most at ease and the most time that I can find some still time and, and some silence. Um, when I was lived in Southern California and I first came to know the Lord probably uh, in high school, uh, I would drive out to the beach often. I was 10 minutes from 
you know, the coast there. I'd go down to Laguna Beach or San Clemente and, and you know, spend some time sitting there and, and just trying to be thoughtful and still. And, um, and I haven't, the last couple of years, have not had that. I've not been able to get out to my favorite beach spot, you know, here at the coast. It's a little bit longer drive, but, um, you know, I haven't been able to do that. So I, a couple of weeks ago, I found myself needing um, to be by water. And I just felt compelled to go down to Canby Community Park and found a picnic table that was just right there by the closest picnic table I could find next to the river. And it's high and it's moving quickly. And it's just, um, and the park was busy. It was a beautiful Sunday morning after church. And I grabbed my Bible and stopped at Thriftway and grabbed a coffee and a donut. Okay, two donuts, but <laughs> don't, don't tell my wife. Um, and I went and I sat and I found that just to be quiet. I didn't open my Bible. I just sat there and just tried to quiet my mind. Even in a small town like Canby, we get busy. Our town gets busy. There's a lot going on, and it's tough to sometimes turn it off. Um, but I was able to just take that hour, hour and a half, and just to be quiet and try to listen. Um, right? We're all familiar with, you know, ask, right? Ask, seek, and knock. Um, I found myself doing a lot of asking and not knocking but pounding um, on the door to try to get answers and I've not taken that time to, to sit and seek and listen. Um, so I think I have found a new place for me to be able to go and do that which is wonderful. Um, <clears throat> as a city we have so much really to be thankful for um, and so much to continue to be prayerful about as a city. Um, you know, I said this at our Christmas tree lighting um, that we do in our town and I think we're one of a few communities that still do Christmas tree lightings, um, that, that we as a city um, can do and can be a lot of great things to a lot of great, to a lot of people. Um, we do sit at one of the lowest points in the valley. We are surrounded on three sides by water and low hills to the east. So we sit protected. Um, I think Canby was chosen in that way for a reason. Though we are the low point, I do believe that we have an opportunity to be the light on the hill for a lot of communities and for a lot of people. I think that's why you see the growth that we are having. People want what we have to offer as a community, and it does start. Sorry, I'm schvelting up here. Um, it does start with us in this room and, and creating that sense of community. So I ask for you to continue to be prayerful for that and put prayer into action to be community minded <laughs> and looking at how we can continue to create that sense of community as people are moving into our community um, and wanting to make it can be their home. Um, in terms of prayers for me um, going forward and I, stillness of mind to focus. I need to be able to shut it down and, and just be able to listen for his voice. Uh, I got up and you know, I noticed my the best times for thinking, and I know many of you probably do this, right? Every, every morning you're up bright and early and take that quiet time of the morning to think and ponder life. I'm not a morning person. Um, but, you know, today, for whatever reason, I got up almost an hour before my alarm clock went off and just felt ready to take on the day today. Um, so, and I took that time to just be still and just try to listen. Uh, provision to meet my family's needs. Uh, you know, mayor ta may mayoring, as my, my youngest likes to call it. Um, he's, you know, Dad, what are you doing tonight? Well, I gotta go do some mayor stuff. He's like, oh, you gotta go mayoring? I'm like, yep, I gotta go mayoring, bud. Um, but just that, you know, continued provision so that I continue to be, can, can continue to be mayoring. Um, that I lead my family and our community as God intends. We all know, right, God puts leaders into position for a reason. Good, bad, or indifferent, they're there for a reason. Um, I'm here for a reason, and uh, I've always said if the day comes and I don't feel that I'm doing those reasons, then I need to step away. Uh, ask for prayers for good health, and that uh, pray that my children will seek out the Lord, and that they will get to know him and be filled with his Holy Spirit. So thank you all so much for being here this morning and for your prayers. Um, for me and for my family in this community. So thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I'd love
like a pastor that's been a pastor serving Canby 39 years. Pastor Ken Harvey of uh, Canby Christian, would you come up please and pray for wonderful Brian? Thank you, sir. Right. Appreciate you. Our Father in heaven, um, we are privileged in our community to have a, a man as our mayor who has a, a humble heart and knows what it's like to be still before you and know that you are God, that you have placed him in the position that he is in, that uh, you have a, a purpose that you have set apart for him as a leader. And Lord, I am so appreciative of that, that in our community, a man who would seek your heart first is a person uh, making decisions using uh, your wisdom uh, as he considers the things that uh, lie before him. Lord, we are thankful that we live in a community that is uh, as filled with so many people that, that know you, that love you, that walk with you. And Lord, we, we desire uh, always when we think that you are the one who is leading us. And, and so I just thank you for Brian's heart that he trusts you with uh, each of his decisions that he would begin a day like today knowing that you are in charge. Father, I pray for Brian's health that you would give him and his family just a, a year in which they are free from any concerns or problems in their health. Would you help them to have a, a year where they have felt better than they've ever felt before? I, I thank you for his children, and I do pray, Father, that his children would seek you and know you. And uh, in his role as a father, may they always uh, see the example that he sets before them of a person who seeks you and trusts you and knows you and loves you with all of his heart, soul, mind, and strength. Lord, we pray for all of the leaders that are a part of our community and the, our, our city government. Uh, I pray, Father, that they would be mindful of all who reside here and, and uh, in, in their decisions, Lord, may they be guided by you. Um, we are so privileged and so blessed to be here and we we thank you that uh, on a morning like this where we get to pray that that prayer matters to our leaders and uh, it touches their heart that they are um, even overwhelmed by the thought that we would lift them before you so lord may he walk in confidence before you walk in a, a confidence that he is doing what you have called him to do and lord may the blessings that result be confirmation of that very thing we, we love you lord and it's in your name we pray amen, amen. Right. Thanks. thank you brian thank you pastor appreciate you thank you sir what a blessing it is to be in canby where we have men of faith as head of our town as head of our police and i'd like to introduce our next speaker, Fire Chief Jim Davis. Will you come up and share with us, Jim? Thank you for coming. Thank you, Pete. Uh, good morning, and what an honor it is to follow Senator Olson and Mayor Hodson, and to be up here on the National Day of Prayer um, today, I thought I would cover, uh, you know, when I first was asked to speak, they said, first of all, keep it to four to seven minutes. Okay, I could do that. But I was thinking, what would I say uh, on National Day of Prayer? Though I, I thought, I'm going to speak from the heart, you know, bring what's in my head to my heart. God blessed uh, my family and I by leading us to Canby, Oregon back in 1996 where I became the uh, fire chief, where I became the fire chief uh, in Oregon City and then transitioned over to Tualatin Valley where I served as the fire or as a division chief of Tualatin Valley for over 20 years. I grew up in a wonderful family of nine siblings, uh, two wonderful parents right in the heart of Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington. Go Zags. Uh, 
I also attended, uh, you know, at that time, Spokane was 82% Roman Catholic. Catholicism was a way of life for me. Attending Catholic grade school, high school at Gonzaga Prep. Oh yeah, I learned to pray uh, at Gonzaga Prep. Uh, and that, to me, is what built my foundation. Um, while, while I was at Gonzaga Prep, they drilled into me studied my study habits, respect for others, and to treat others how you expect to be treated. In 1973, I began my family, and my wife, Michelle, of 45 years, this, I better remember that too, because that's this Saturday. Uh, and uh, my career took me to uh, New York, to Germany, to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, to Woodenville for over Woodenville, Washington for over 17 years, and then down to Oregon City. And God blessed me in 2014 by allowing me to be the fire chief in Canby, Oregon. I was two weeks from receiving my retirement check. Something just told me I needed to take this job because I've lived in Canby since 96, and I truly Canby is a community that truly cares, and this is where I wanted to end my career. When I moved to Oregon, everyone kept encouraging me to move to Canby because I kept saying, where is there a community that really cares? Everybody kept steering me to Canby, Oregon. I had two sons at the time. One was a sophomore, and moving a sophomore at that time in my, in my uh, life was uh, a challenge. Uh, but he fit in right away, as we did as well, uh, in the Canby community. In the 45 years that I've been in the fire service, uh, the, uh, I've had the opportunity uh, to be there in good times and when people are having the worst day in their life. I've been there when coworkers are crying when they come back to the fire station after an incident that they have been on. God had blessed me to uh, actually be with my parents, both my parents, at two different times to hold them as they passed away. And to, where I really, truly know that there's a God up there is that on a Thursday afternoon, when I'm normally hard at work, and something told me, to, I was in Woodenville, Washington at the time, and they told me that I needed to uh, head to Spokane, and that night my dad passed away in my arms. And the same when I was in Seattle, it was time to go home, and my mom died uh, in my arms. I've been there when uh, tragic things have happened to firefighters off duty. God blessed me to allow me to go and pick up a fellow coworker who died in a climbing accident. I performed numerous defusings with emergency workers after this scene. Why, I don't know. Uh, how, why did God lead me to this? Today, we find our nation in some turmoil, but I have faith that God knows what uh, the plan is. I really do believe that. Our pastors in the Canby community are closer today than I can ever recall. The fire department, the police department, along with the uh, Canby Center and public safety chaplains and pastors now have a first responder fund organized together with the, with the pastors in the local community, the Canby Center, the fire department, and the police department. We have firefighters and police officers and city staff that truly care about Canby. This is just a reminder to me of how Canby cares. I carry a cross in my pocket every day. Uh, I generally feel it when I'm pulling change out to buy Chief Smith coffee over at Starbucks. <laughs> and uh, it reminds me that I'm gonna have a good day that day. I carry my cross in my pocket to, as a simple, simple reminder to me the fact that I am a Christian no matter where I might be. The little cross is not magic, nor is it a good luck charm. It isn't meant to protect me from physical harm. It is not for identification or for people to see. It is a simple understanding between my Savior and me. Uh, it reminds me 
uh, it reminds me that uh, to be thankful for every day that God has given me and to bless me with uh, for my family and, and for the firefighters and police officers that are out doing their job. Please pray for me today uh, that all first responders, fire and police officers, that they're kept safe at all times and they, they provide service upon self and care with care and compassion. That's my, that's my prayer for today. Thank you. Thank you for serving us. I'm gonna ask a fellow that you probably all know who's been serving Canby for uh, 48 years, uh, Reverend Mr. Jerry Geiger from St. Patrick's. Will you come up and uh, pray for our civil servants, our first responders, and our fire and chief? My friend. <laughs> Actually, I'd like to share something with you because sometimes prayers are hollow if they don't have some, some kind of a real good basis. And so for our first responders, we'd like to pray for all first responders, fire, police, EMS, and all civil servants, all our military, those that go where sometimes we can't go or we fear to go. And uh, especially for those who respond to our homes and our businesses, on a, minute's, on a moment's notice, not knowing what they're going to get into. And, but first I'd like to share with you one thing that's for, because each one of us is called to um, respond to the needs of others. And Matthew tells us, then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since this creation of the world for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat I was thirsty you gave me something to drink I was a stranger and you invited me in I needed clothes and you clothed me I was sick and you looked after me I was in prison and you came to visit me then the righteous will answer him Lord when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink when did we see you, a stranger, invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison or go to visit you? And the king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to pray for Chief Davis and all first responders. And we ask that the compassion that he has for others will filter through to the men and women that are under his command, and for all of the law enforcement, fire professionals, civil servants, military, that at a moment's notice will respond for us. We thank you so much for each one of them. We thank you so much for the care that they give, for the needs that they meet, even when it may not be their responsibility. And we thank you so much that they are the ones that are running into peril when we're running away from it. May Chief Davis have a long, wonderful, continued command and profession. And we thank you so much for, that he is with us and he is in charge of those that meet our needs. And we ask these things through your son, Jesus Christ, who lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend, and thank you, Jim, thank you. Chief Davis. Thank you. Thank you. Um, at this point, I'm going to have uh, you stand, if you will, please. And we're going to sing for a short stanza that's in your bulletin there. God bless America, and then I will close us.
Pastor, for 38 years, Lee will <laughs> say our ending prayer and then I'll dismiss us. Let's pray together. Father God, we love you a whole bunch. Father, we thank you that we live in a country where we can gather together freely and we can pray. We live in a country where our leaders have said we need to set aside a day just to pray. And Father, we thank you for our community here in Canby with so many leaders that believe in you and believe in prayer. God, we pray that they would be encouraged this day and each and every day as they serve you and do so faithfully. God, we love you. We pray in your son's most precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming today. Thank you again for coming. If you need a note, because I, did, I held you over five minutes, come see me and I'll write a note to your boss. To coin a phrase from Star Wars this National Day of Prayer, may the fourth be with you. <laughs>